<laughs> okay, I'll call this meeting to order. Pledge allegiance. <coughs> Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Agenda today is President's remarks. If there aren't any public comment, motion to approve platform tennis area work, media questions, and adjournment to have a look. Any changes to the agenda? Motion to approve. All those in favor? Aye. Since I have no comments myself at this point, uh, I will turn it over to public comment. My name is uh, Cliff Berg. Um, we're relatively new. Address, new. name and address. Oh, sorry. Okay. Uh, Cliff Berg, uh, 310 Piedmont Court. Um, we're relatively new residents here in Ocean Pines and uh, moved in in March. And one of the a couple of points I'd like to make in favor of this uh, resolution is that, number one, uh, one of the attractions, quite frankly, to moving to Ocean Pines is the amenities that are available here in Ocean Pines, unlike uh, some of the surrounding area. And, and I think uh, the board and the association needs to keep uh, those amenities up, maintain them, and put the capital in to, to improve them when, when, when possible. Secondly, certainly does improve and maintain our property values as we move on to have amenities that are, that are attractive to new home buyers. So I'd like to make those points in favor of the resolution. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Bill Wentworth, Seven Trinity Place. Um, just some information, folks, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, plat platform tennis members collectively have paid over fifty thousand dollars in amenity fees over the last four years. Uh, during these four year period, there have been absolutely no maintenance or repairs done to the facility down there. Uh, we, our costs were minimal, if there are any costs at all. Uh, we don't have, where there is a golf pro, and a tennis pro, and an aquatics director, we don't have that. Our advanced players provide on their own time uh, instruction to new players and players who want to improve their skills. And it occurs just that every Saturday afternoon. Uh, in, in addition to that, uh, uh, volunteers uh, take care of when it snows, clearing the courts, the range, buying the courts. Uh, so we take care of all that ourselves. Uh, in the last four years, we've seen very little return for our investment or for our time. And we certainly would appreciate <coughs> You folks, ladies and gentlemen, could come to my to a single mind to support the effort to do what needs to be done to uh, repair and maintain the facility. Thank you. <laughs> I'll, I'll uh, Mike Petito, 39 Newport Drive. I am the new president of Ocean Wise Platform Tennis, and I'd like to thank you all for your decision. <laughs> Uh, you missed a great event on Saturday. It was a Susan Coleman of women, uh, helping women, supporting women. We had a great turnout for pickleball, tennis, and platform tennis. We all mingled, got along great together, raised a bunch of money for cancer, and hopefully this complex and these kind of activities are going to continue. Bigger, the better. We're constantly getting new people in, new people from Pickle interested in uh, platform, platform interested in tennis, and we did that Saturday. We intermingled in each other's sports, and it was a great day raising money. And I'd just like to mention also, platform does a lot of charity events, and we also clean up the park, the litter. We're doing it again at the end of June. We get volunteers to walk around, pick up all the papers and plastic cups, even over by the ball field. So, 
That's all I have to say. And thank you for your vote. Who else? I'm uh, Tres Dank, uh, 22 Moonraker, and I'm um, with the Recreation and Parks Board. And uh, we were requested to write a, a letter of recommendation. Uh, we all felt uh, highly about that. I want to make sure if you hadn't gotten that, that you know that the Parks Board is behind the, these guys 100%. It's in their yeah, I think it's a very valuable asset to our community. And uh, when they said that they were ready for tournaments and that the uh, part the, the courts were not, I think that was the, the key that really made me realize that they're farther ahead than we realized. And, and I even have family in Pennsylvania that would come down and play that I didn't even know about until I was made aware of our sport. That this uh, is becoming much more popular. Thank you. Yeah, we did receive a letter from Roy Foreman, chairman of the Parks and Recreation Advisory Committee. Who else? Okay. I'm sorry? Okay. I'm Frank Creamer, 116 Boston Drive. I'm going to talk about the platform, but I want to deviate for a second. I'm the pickleball person that I hope you're going to hear about me more in the future. We're trying to incorporate pickleball into the whole racket complex. So I, I just hope you just file that away in the back of your mind because I got a feeling one day I'll be standing up here asking you. So. <laughs> but anyway, I want to reiterate what they said. It was a wonderful, wonderful Saturday. Everybody played together, switched teams, switched sports, and it ended up being just a, a wonderful tournament. And I think right now, Ocean Pines is in a place where there's going to be a lot of people coming from north and south and West. Hopefully we can draw them here to retire. They're looking for places that have the facilities and the amenities they want, and they want them first class. We have an opportunity to get better platform courts, better tennis courts, and hopefully in the future you guys are going to look at pickleball courts when I come and stand in front of you and ask for them. Bring a brochure because I know I've got, I've got letters of that tradition I can send you. APTA, which is the American Platform Tennis Association, offers a grant up to $15,000. Down in Alpharetta, Georgia, they have seven courts, and they were just giving a grant to build two more. Now, all we need is a grant writer to write up a proposal why we need the courts and why we need the repairs. And it would be on their list. It has to get done before September, the grant and they will make up their decision May 2014. If they say yes, then you get 15 grand. Good letter, we'll do it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. May I ask Mike a question? Sure. Mike, if I'm correct, uh, you're the president, correct? Of the paddle ball? Excuse me. What was that, Sharon? You're the president of the paddle ball? Yes. Okay. Um, where else are there paddle ball facilities on the east? Uh, Washington, D.C., Delaware, Connecticut. But on the eastern shore, is there on any place else? Easton, 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 on the eastern shore has two courts. So other than Easton, this is the only place to play paddle yeah, where, are you, where are you going to want to come from? If you're from D.C., Pittsburgh, okay. Delaware, you want to retire here. I want them to retire here. You do too? <laughs> Thank you. Well, also, we have, I mean, even as far as coming down on vacations that are coming down looking for clay courts, you, we got the best clay courts over here on the Houston Shore. We really do. It's a nice facility. You market it over to Ocean City and offer them some free tennis play, maybe. They may want to come and retire here. I think if you market it well, we can have uh, some facility. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. You're welcome. Tom, would you like me to get that information to them? Yeah, I'm just gonna... Sorry. No, no, that's fine. <laughs> uh, Terry and Mike talk after this meeting. We need to make sure that the grant, how, who has to apply for it. We're not a municipality. 
we may have to ask the county to apply for us or who knows how we do it but uh, i think it's done by just private communities well let's connect you and terry we do have somebody that can write yeah. that you do have a grant writer yes. correct we, got, yeah. we have a grant researcher we have someone to do that yeah. one yeah. anybody else <coughs> we are yeah, we're a member of the apta anyways <laughs> ocean park okay okay I just didn't want to lose that thought before we moved on. Okay, motion to approve platform task work area. Dana, I believe you pulled this together for us. Oh, yes. I was not in the last month's meeting when the subject came up, uh, so I'm working from notes of things that I saw there just to get a motion back on it. The motion is it is moved that the platform, that the board of directors approve the recommendations of the Ocean Pines administration regarding the platform tennis courts and authorize the general manager to proceed with the work forthwith as follows. One, award a defense contract to total platform tennis at a cost of $5,100. Two, award paving contract to Bosman Paving at a cost of $3,060. Three, award reconditioning and painting contract to American Tennis Courts Incorporated at a cost of $8,835. And fourth, direct the Ocean Pines Public Works to install two by two frames on platform tennis court number two to hold the asphalt while it cures. That needs a second. That's the motion. You have a second? I'll second it. And we have a first motion and a second. Discussion. Right. Yes, Mr. President. I, if I may now continue. Sure. Uh, as none of these contracts exceed the general manager's authority to expend funds, it's not really necessary for the board to instruct the president to execute the contracts. However, because the total cost of three contracts involved in this project is 16,997 and the current budget historic replacement reserve only includes a sum of $7,000 for this project in this current year's budget, it's necessary for the board to approve the project. The over budget amount of $9,997 will come from the, o the OPA Historic Reserve Account, which we call our Replacement Reserve, which has more than adequate funding to handle this amount without impact on other planned historic, re historic reserve fund uses this year. A little bit of background in, in addition to what you received from uh, Bill. Platform Tennis was moved to the Manklin Meadows facility during the, a period of four years from 2002 to 2006. The initial move moved two courts over there in 2002, and the second two courts were finished in 2006. To my knowledge, no major maintenance has been done on those courts since that time. Everybody can do the math. So 11 years for two courts, and seven years for the other two. The board of directors had agreed at that time, back in the 2002 period, to fund the project provided that the platform tennis players group could increase their membership to 100 members. They achieved that goal and have maintained at least 100 active members since. The current membership on our last membership report was 103. The amenity does operate in the black for OPA. It generates, according to Mr. Carmine, about $12,000 a year in membership income against roughly $2,500 in annual cost. In other words, a $9,000 investment or a $16,000 investment is going to amortize itself in less than two years. It is a year-round facility with play continuing 12 months a year, and the members provide their own snow removal when necessary along with other routine maintenance and cleaning. The courts have not, as I said, received any significant maintenance since installation and are now at the point where service cracks can be seen and may be hazardous to players amongst other issues. It's time for OPA to bring this facility up to the standards that we maintain for regular tennis, particularly because these dedicated and enthusiastic members certainly merit our support. And uh, I've been out there to look at those tennis, you know, the platform tennis conditions. Uh, in my mind, they clearly warrant the repairs that are needed. But uh, don't hold any other comments on that one until later. Uh, I don't know who's first, Chair. 
I want to thank all of you for coming. Can you raise your hand, all the members? This is an incredible turnout. Thank you for your show support. Um, secondly, I also have been out there, and I saw the conditions of the court. And we are starting having, from what I understand, people who can get injured very easily with ankle injuries. We don't need that. We, we have a really good facility over there for the tennis, and we certainly want these people to be playing and, and be safe to it. So um, thank you all for showing up. Thank you. One, uh, one thing, Dan. No. Okay. Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, a couple questions. I, I was also out there. I saw some minor cracking in the surface. I didn't, I didn't see anything or anything. But, Bob, do we have a second bid for the fencing? We, I mean, I, I, we do not for the fencing. No. Do we have a second bid for the paving? We have three bids for the paving, if I'm not mistaken. Well, it was, he only gave us the one that I can see. Okay. Bosman, Hayden, Grady. We have another question. I'll look, I'll look for it by okay. And the last one, of course, is do we have a, a second bidding for the, a bid for the painting? I, my package only shows one bid each. Oh, and that's not a bid. It just shows one quote each. It's not a bid. We have two. Uh, then I've... I got something I'd like to say. Because this isn't about paddle tennis. It has nothing to do with the paddle tennis. It has to do with the way we do business. And uh, it reminds me, I sort of feel like Howard Beale. Remember him? He was played by a guy named Finch in a movie called Network. And he's famous for the line, I'm bad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore. That's where I am. The board majority approved the general manager's budget, which started 48 days ago. We approved it February 23rd. We're midway through the second month. The general manager has already requested $70,000 in over budget requests in 48 days. Last month, Sharon. Uh, made a motion to spend 19804 new capital on the HVAC system at the Beach Club. Not in any budget. Uh, at the same meeting, Terry Moore made a uh, motion to spend 19436 to a sole source contract to replace irrigation on the golf course. If we approve Dan's motion today for the Blackboard Tennis Course, which is 16997 in a budget that has 7,000 in it. We're 9,997 more over budget. That brings the total in 48 days of $49,237 in approved over budget expenditures. Not one emergency. Not one. I, I, I would stand up for an emergency. There's no emergency here. According to our April unaudited controller's report, we finished up last year at minus $405,268,000. $405,268 in the red. At this pace, we're going to knock that right into the dirt. At this pace, we're spending $1,000 a day over budget. Why do we have a budget? Why? If these courts were in such terrible condition, and I, and I got photographs, I, if they were in such terrible condition today, why weren't they in such terrible condition 48 days ago, or last February when we did a budget? Guys, it's time for this board, it's this board's duty to take, put a stop to enabling this kind of reckless spending. I don't know about you, but I'll finish up with I'm mad as hell, and I'm not going to take it anymore. Call your question. No, no, no. I have something to say. You know, I, there might be other you people that have something to say. Who was first? Dave, go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. 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 Go Back in January of this year, we were doing going through the budget drills, and uh, at that point in time, uh, a line item for the red uh, 
reconstitution of uh, court number one was in the budget for seven thousand dollars that budget was uh, passed now simultaneous with that since we were working on the previous year's budget there was a line item in that past budget the uh, 2013 budget uh, for sixty five hundred dollars which actually probably unfortunately said uh, reconstitution of uh, court number uh, court number one same thing but I believe they were talking about one and two so at the time we're discussing that budget pretty much the same time frame although we were not aware of it at least I wasn't uh, we were also preparing a, a RFP uh, and that went out on January 21st the RFP went out to do two courts okay I think with the intent being that we would do the first court under the 2013 money and the second court under the 2014 money there is also if you read that RFP a provision in there for um, repainting and refixing the other courts that is to do minor uh, types of work you can read the RFP it's on the website now that money as far as I know it was was not budgeted I don't think it was included in the budget okay so what happens um, the intent is we're going to fix court number one actually court number two as it stands right now and they ought to take court number two out of 2013 money we're going to do 2000 uh, the next court out of 2014 money and there's a bunch of stuff that hasn't been mentioned in the budget what actually happened and Bob kind of explained it I think you know the actual results coming back didn't allow that to be done in other words we couldn't spend the 2013 money in time to do anything and um, in fact, we needed to get several different contractors rather than one contractor to do the whole thing. And I think Bob explained that before. You know, it just works out that way. Now, sometimes things happen and, uh, and you can't really help them. But where we're left is, is that the 2013 money is gone. And we have $7,000 and we need $10,000, you know, give or take a few cents, to finish the job and to do it. 10,000, in other words, a $10,000 out of budget request. Now, my conflict comes in, my personal conflict comes in the fact that I've said, and I've only got a month and a half left, and I think I've pretty much complied. I said on day one, I'm not going to vote for a non budget proposal unless, unless it's an emergency, which I think this clearly is not. It's a very good thing to do. By the way, let me say, that back in January, with a little more foresight, if we had been told, look, we need to do two courts and we need to patch up these other courts, it's going to cost $17,000. That budget would have passed in a heartbeat. With all the stuff that we were, I mean, there would be, we wouldn't be sitting here. <laughs> I mean, it'd just be, be getting done. But it didn't happen that way. So, if it's not an emergency, then what else? I also know that budgeting is not an exact science and that you will find out that you need more money in one area than you do need in another. But what you do is you can replace. You can say, okay, I can put this off. You hold to the budget. I have a big problem with not so much Dan's motion, uh, but his explanation that it's not a problem. We have historic reserves, so we can just take anything we want out of the historic, uh, historic reserves. We can do that anytime we want. And there's plenty of money in there. Why is there plenty of money in there? Who put the plenty of money in there? We did. So I have a problem too with this. But I will suggest, though, I also believe, I truly believe, that we ought to do this project. I have no doubt about it. So I would like to order for an amendment to Nan's motion. Made the motion. Pardon? Well, Mr. President, did anybody go on? Of course. Yeah. I'm just passing it.
down. So I'm just uh, oh, yeah. Uh, Can you receive the second? No, yes, I do. <laughs> okay. I move that the motion on the floor be amend amended to substitute the following for the last line of paragraph one. That is to say, the over budget amount of $9,997 will be replaced in this year's budget by deleting the recreation and parks capital line item for truck 316 and including that item in next year's budget. Second. Well, according to Robert's rules, the person who made the original motion has the authority to accept or, or reject the motion. That's not the way it no, works. No, that's no, not no. the way it worked when I did. That's not really true. Uh, any, anybody, can, can make anybody, anybody can make a, 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 an amendment motion. And it it's just second, happened to me two it, meetings ago. If it's seconded, in fact, it's on the table for discussion against the standing motion. So this has been seconded. It's on the table for, for discussion. Okay, discussion. Any question? What impact does it have to the question to not purchase a truck? You know, off the top of my head, first. Yeah, I. I'll give you my. I'll give you my take on this. You start into a, to a. There are reasonable trade-offs, like the one that was referred to earlier. Um, although it was presented as if it were over budget, which it's not. Uh, the flooring over at the Beach Club was traded off for HVAC. may not have been dollar for dollar, but it was in fact a replacement. So we did not do the flooring and we moved the money to HVAC, which is basically what is being proposed here, is that we do not do the truck and we move the money to fixing the platform tents. So there is a there is precedence for this action being taken. We just did it. If I may, Tom, there, there, there is one difference I'd like to point out between those two actions. That both of these actions are clearly uh, replacement reserve actions. I mean, they, we're talking about things that exist and we're going to replace them. Simple as that. It's not quite as clear in the earlier case that the HVAC was a replacement action. It, it, in fact, is new capital since we never had one. So, well, that's, but, that's up at night, too. But the bottom line is we traded money for one thing for another. That's true. Your motion is, is moving the truck to next year, uh, which I'm not sure where that puts us financially. How much was this truck? Did anybody have any idea? Yeah, $25,000. So it actually puts us ahead in the budget and uh, for other things that might come up later on. And, I, and you know what? I, I feel like I'm, I'm and this maybe it's a personal thing. But Dorian, if I went six years without doing this, I'm going to, you know, certainly finish it up. I think the budget has to be taken seriously. If you simply say that you can buy whatever you want because there's a whole bunch of money in this reserve pile, then you might as well tear the budget up and throw it away. Okay, let me let me straighten let me straighten out let me straighten out one other issue here that, that I think needs to be referenced. Uh, the, the comment that the $7,000 from last year's budget was gone, the budget dollar amount was gone. But it's like putting money in a savings account. If you don't spend the money that particular year, doesn't mean the money still isn't in the savings account the next year. The money itself did not disappear because it couldn't be spent in last year's budget because we couldn't get three bids and in order to do the work under a three bid limit. So the dollars didn't disappear. The budget is closed. There's no question about that. You can't go back to last year's budget and spend that budget dollars from last year. But the actual dollars in the bank, if you will, um, are not gone. They are still there. The 7,000 that was put aside for that work um, is still sitting in the account. You cannot can, can compare or, or well, but the, you, the they, budget the budget to the finances, because just as those dollars might still be there, there are other dollars which exceeded budget, which a lot more, which aren't there. 
The I, budget is is the point, Tom. I, 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 I just agree with you there. I just agree. You can't spend budget dollars from last year. Okay. But the dollars are still there in the account. You made the comment the money is gone. The money is not gone. It is not, still there. Not the dollars are still there in the account. Correct. Dollars are there. Dollars are still in the account. Terry. Okay. Um, couple things. I'm getting a little irritated with being accused of not caring about the budget. Um, I care about the budget just as much as everybody else does. But I also care about the day-to-day, real-life operations of Ocean Ponds. We have a very large group of people who are dedicated to this recreational activity. Where I come from in the medical world, if you have cracks on a court, that's an emergency to fix if there are that many people playing on it. You could ask any orthopedic surgeon around and they would agree. So I think those courts need to be fixed before somebody gets hurt. But that being said, this, this support from this group is, is just incredible. And we owe it to them. I mean, we're up here because of them. We, we serve them. Just because it is out of budget, I know, Marty, you have this thing about being out of budget. I don't look at my decisions as only if it's in or out of budget. You always say we have a fiduciary responsibility. Well, fiduciary responsibility to me means, yes, trying to stick within the budget, but also making sure that the needs of our community are met. I think that's just as much of, as a, of a fiduciary responsibility. And I agree. That's why it ought to be in the budget. It's not the budget. That's where you missed. But Real it's quick. not. And Real we quick, have because it's important. When our treasurer is discussing this, you call it operations. This isn't operations. We're discussing capital. Two well, totally different things that our treasurer should know about. If, if okay, I'm, so if... if if you want to, just like I told you before this meeting started, you asked me a question about how much we owe on something. Marty, I don't memorize the numbers like you do. I'm sorry, I don't. Everybody around this table knows that. I go to the people that I need to go to. If you had asked me that question and wanted the answer, I would have been happy to go find the answer for you. I didn't ask the question. Tom asked me the question. Okay, but I'm just, I'm just <laughs> All right, this is off the point. Yeah, let's quit. Right now. But you know what, Tom? It's not off the point. This is every time, and we'll leave this meeting, even if we have enough votes to give you what it is that you're asking for, we'll walk away from this meeting with everybody thinking that the rest of us don't care about the budget. This comes up every single time. If I may, I understand you. If you vote over the budget and it's not an emergency you don't care about all right budget. excuse me we're going to go one at a time here and I ray, you had your hand. my motion ray <laughs> you had your hand what did we learn about timing here had the board of directors known prior to passing of the last budget that this was really necessary and coming up we wouldn't be here correct so That's always true. look ahead and make sure these things get presented to the board so they can be in the budget and everything will get done without it. Okay. okay. Hold on. You're putting it on up. Hold no. On. Oh, no, no, no. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah. We're not the professionals here. Yeah. Excuse me. We clarify something that I believe Ray is trying to say. The reality is in December and January and February, when this year's budget was being developed, I'm not a soothsayer. Neither is Bob Thompson. Neither is anybody else on this board. There was no way for us to know when we were passing the budget in February that the original $7,000 wasn't going to be spent in March. So the fact that it didn't get spent rolls it into this year, whether it's comfortable or uncomfortable. Unless you have a crystal ball, you're not going to know that money at the end of a fiscal year is going to be spent or not. And financially, we don't roll over budget dollars to the next year or escrow them from one year to another in Ocean Pines, we close the books and open up a new budget. That's how we've chosen to do business. I know companies that do allow for the escrowing of money from a previous year's budget for work that carries over from one year to another. 
So that does happen from time to time. But back to the motion that Dave has on the table, it in essence is removing a $25,000 truck from this year's budget, replacing it with a $9,997 figure towards the platform tennis. Um, that's, that's basically a $15,000 uh, savings, if you will, if you want to put it that way. Um, the reality is, um, I would like to, and I guess I'm going to now, uh, suggest an adjustment to this. If we have to go down this far. You may make an amendment to Which is what I'm going to try to do. One time. Yeah. <laughs> so if anybody else wants it right. after this. Right. My, my amendment would, would simply be to take that $15,000 or the 9997 excuse me, put that in abeyance from the budget so that later in the budget year, next year's board, can to decide whether to reinstitute that 9997 depending on what the capital budget is at that time. We don't take it off the books completely. We put it so that it can be represented again later in the fiscal year. The truck was needed, otherwise we wouldn't have passed the budget to pay for it. Where's the floor for the beach club if it was needed? Yeah, I, I, can't, I'm not um, buying that. I can't do anything about this truck not knowing the, not being reminded of why we passed the truck to begin with. I don't think that's fair to Park and Rex. I mean, we passed that already. Okay. And Dave, you know, we don't have any other information except for that number. Call the question. Any other so, comments? I'm not ready to call the question yet, Marty. Well, you don't call it. Your president right. does. Your treasurer. Right. Okay, Just so, so may, may I end with one yes. more statement? Okay. So, I understand, uh, Marty. I, I know where I, I know where you come from. I got it, and I'm very accepting of that. I would like to, on the record, for people to know that it's not that I don't care about the budget. That's all. Thank you. All right. I'm going to call the question on this amendment. All those in favor of Dave's amendment, you want to read the amendment again? <laughs> I move the motion on the floor be amended to substitute the following for the last line of paragraph one, so that it now would read, the over budget amount of 9,907 will be replaced in this year's budget by deleting the recreation and parks capital line item for truck number 316, including that item in next year's budget. It has been moved and seconded, and I'll call the question. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Back to the original motion from Dan. We have some additional information here from Bob. Uh, glancing at it, I think it's worthwhile here. Okay. Uh, following the last meeting, uh, we went back and looked at trying to um, to uh, give some clarification. If I give enough of I'm not upstairs. Give me some clarification on this. Um, we actually do look ahead with our budgeting. Uh, unfortunately, as I stated at the last board meeting, uh, we were trying to spend the money within the, the, the budget here. Unfortunately, when, when we did not get the multiple bids, which I know is a requirement, we went back to the drawing board and resubmitted RFP, still didn't get the multiple bids. Um, so what we had to do was pare it down or, or, or separate the work so we could make sure that we, we had a, um, at least a sufficient amount that was reasonable. Now, with that being said, uh, as we're looking at, at, at this particular platform tennis activity, we recognize it's growing. We recognize that the, the folks are actively participating. And as we look ahead, uh, our future budget, budgeting, we had 6,500 in the FY13 budget. We had budgeted 7,000 this year. FY15 in FY16, we had projected, which you're not going to have because we haven't started those budget processes, to resurface court three and resurface court four at a cost of $7,500 each. If you look at the total cost, 65, 7, 75, 75, over the 40 year period, it would have been $28,500. Again, knowing each year we were going to resurface the courts. Well, as we looked at that, 
with the lack of work that's been accomplished in the last few years, we went in the RFP, Mr. Stevens was correct, we asked what it would cost to have all of the courts done at once, painted, so we could get a better idea, and if there was any cost savings associated with it. So the scope of this work included court two being blacktopped, which it is currently concrete, the cost of 3062 unhook and retighten the tension fence, court two, um, with all the proper tension, repair the snow gates, install the pins, bolts, et cetera, and make sure they're all functioning properly. It's not a standard fence. It's a tension fence for this particular activity. Very few companies will actually touch this type of fencing. So we did look <coughs> and try to get bids to do so. We also needed to fill, resurface, and repaint all four courts. Same color schemes as tennis. This is where we're getting a benefit when we, when we do all four at once. Total cost of the project is 16,997 compared to the 28,5, which we would have budgeted the next two years to resurface the two additional courts, which you can look forward, which we are trying to do, it's a savings of 11,503 over the next couple years. So we are doing our analysis, we are looking closely at it, and we are trying to make sure we're making a reasonable approach. In this particular case, we found we could realize some savings by having all the work done at once. So I thought this might be helpful in addition to the information provided last month on the platform tenants. Now the other part that I want to answer, Mr. Clark asked me a question about multiple proposals. If you recall last month, I said there weren't multiple. We did get two proposals, one from Chesapeake and one from Bosman for the paving, the black topping basically of the court. It's a very small job. Uh, hard to get folks to bid on that. But we did get two, and we're recommending the low bidder. So I hope that clarifies and answers any questions. And I thought this uh, summary might be helpful in addition to the report we already provided. Just one quick thing. Dave had his hand. That took a little more to do. Chesapeake wasn't in the package, Bob. That's, that's why. Okay. No, that's fine. That's why we uh, answered. If we give you a seven from the 13 market, and the 65 from the 14 budget, this is still 26% of the budget. You would not, I, I can uh, respectfully say you would not have approved it if, if I had brought you it months ago without multiple bids. So we needed to go back and try to get the multiple bids. Unfortunately, we couldn't, so we regrouped and went at it this way. I think it was a reasonable approach to it, and we're trying to make the necessary improvements and exercise some cost savings. You always have a better chance with me if it's in budget. Dave? Yeah, let me, let me just make sure I understand what you say, Bob. Yes, sir. Um, you're saying that you had already, um, we've done this in the past, we've had out your budgets. I can remember, see Phil Rico sitting there, and that one comes crystal clear in my where we actually took money that was budgeted in out to the next five years uh, to do uh, redo the tennis courts. So we spent the money in a, in a budget year basically taking it from the next budget year. Can be done. It's reasonable. Okay, now are you telling me that the $7,500 in FY15 and $7,500 in FY16 are no longer required because of if, if we pass this contract. That's so correct. Words, they'll, they'll disappear. That's how I understand. Now, again, we don't have an approved budget for 15 or 16, but if you look, 13 we had 6,500 budget. 14 we had 7,000. That's only two of the four courts. We would have increased, so you're absolutely well, correct. Uh, in, in, to a certain extent, you know, a five-year out budget, which we've always had, is never officially approved because it's five years, you know, it's, right. it's future years. Right. Nonetheless, it's an indication of what we intend to do yes. and what we intend to spend. It should be a good indication of that. If you're saying that next year, when it comes budget time, these, you know, platform tennis is done. Yes, I mean, sir. That's correct. And it infected this. Then, I mean, there is precedent for it. And uh, I don't know if Ray was on, I can't remember, saying, but Marty, you were on the board for sure. It was the first year that we did it with Bill Rico. Mm -hmm. and, and Bill Bill recommended it, that, hey, it's to our advantage to do this all at once. 
We had it earlier. We get savings from it and everything like that. Okay. All right. One. I'll buy that. Any other comments? I good. I, I just just wanted to thank the folks for coming out today as well, Sharon. I know you did and I wanted to as well. As well, I also appreciated the the enthusiasm behind this and the willingness and patience to allow for this meeting to be held to work through the issues. Uh, this issue was one of many at our last board meeting. Uh, it was complicated and confusing. It's the, re it's the very reason that I tabled the issue, because there's more to it than this. Uh, and uh, unless there's any other comments, I don't well, think you have taken a vote yet. I didn't hear well, it. We but haven't voted. He's just talking. He's just talking. Just somebody wake Joe up. Yeah, somebody wake Joe up. Yeah, <laughs> <somebody> <laughs> wake <Jill> up. Um, <coughs> Any other comments? I will call the question. All those in favor of Dan's motion? Aye. Opposed? Surprise. <laughs> Ray? <coughs> no, 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 no. No question. It's on the page. Oh, that's right. Media question. That's why Ray's looking at that. Ray? Now, now, Ray. Now, Ray. I'll be remembered for the one for saying this. Motion to adjourn. Motion? Second. Second. All those in favor? Thank you.